Hi guys, today we're going to go over six tips for starting an online boutique. Um, before I jump into that, I just want to say that currently I am struggling with COVID, so I apologize if I cough at any point or something like that. Um, also, on a side note, my fiancé has challenged me to create five videos a week, which is, in his words, 225 videos until the end of December. So I'm not sure that I have enough to talk about for that, but we're definitely going to try because I'm a very competitive person, um, so I can't let him win this bet. I'm going to do it, and it's going to be difficult, but we're going to make it through. Um, so on that note, if you guys want to follow along to my next 225 videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, um, like my videos, Please comment if you have any suggestions on what you want me to talk about over the next year. Um, I am more than open to suggestions because, like I said, I will probably run out of things to talk about. Um, so anyways, for starting a boutique, I have six different tips. This is kind of what helped me get through. Um, Starting a boutique is a lot of research, so the first thing that you want to do is figure out who you want to sell to. Um, figure out your target customer. Is it the younger kids, like 16 to 30? I know 30 is not a kid, um, but a younger crowd, or do you want like 25 to 50? Do you want to encompass all of it? Um, so for myself, my target is kind of like the 24, 25 years old range to about 50 to 60. Um, kind of depends on the person and on their style, but I try to go for that kind of customer base because I personally don't have the style to appeal to the younger crowds nowadays. I don't really wear crop tops. I don't... Um, wear tight dresses, stuff like that, and I try to reflect my boutique as what I would wear. Um, obviously, I put a lot of stuff into my boutique that personally I wouldn't wear, but other people do like, so I try to get a very diverse array of clothes, I guess you could say, but I also don't want to put stuff into the boutique that I personally wouldn't feel comfortable trying on and taking pictures in, so I... I definitely made sure I had a very distinct style for my boutique. So that was one of the first things I did was figure out who I wanted to sell to, um, make sure that I can appeal to their their clothing needs. Um, another thing that I had to figure out was what I wanted to sell. Did I want to focus on only women's? Did I want to introduce women's and kids? Did I want to do only kids? Um, there's a lot of different things you can sell in a boutique, so I think that it's really important to figure out what type of items you want to sell. So for me, right now, we live in Wisconsin, um, so it's freezing, and currently it's like 20 degrees out, but um, you want to make sure that you're selling clothing for all seasons, because if you have customers that are in Florida, if you have customers that are up in, I don't know, Canada, if you're shipping internationally, um, you want to make sure you have something for everybody. So for us, we have all four seasons, so that kind of made it easy to figure out what to sell. Um, the things that I have a harder time figuring out is shoes, like do I want to sell shoes, do I not want to sell shoes, I haven't expanded too much into it, but there might be people out there who have boutiques that focus on shoes, or they focus on sweaters, or they focus on selling jackets and accessories, um, so I think that's really important before you do literally anything, is to figure out what you want to sell and who you want to sell it to. Tip number two, research different platforms that you want to maybe try and sell on. So do you want to create your boutique and sell on Etsy? Do you want to sell, try and sell it on eBay or Amazon? Or do you want to have your own website? Do you want to only do it through Facebook? Um, I have seen Etsy stores that sell their own clothes. I've seen Amazon stores that sell boutique clothes. I've seen standalone stores in the malls. I've seen um, people who run their boutiques strictly on Facebook. 
I have also seen people who have multiple different websites for their boutique. Um, personally, I did a lot of research. I knew I wanted my own website and I knew I wanted a mobile app. So with that, I kind of got to two different choices. I started off with Comments Sold and I actually still use them today. Um, Comments Sold was really appealing to me because I didn't have to do invoices. I could issue account credit. I the main thing for me with comments sold was that it kept track of literally everything. Um, it gave me reports for all my customers, it gave me my sales reports, financials, cost of goods sold, everything like that that I may have wanted or needed to know, it kept track of it. So I thought that was really cool. Another thing that I really liked about comments sold was that I could have a mobile app. So if I upgraded to the $150 plan a month, um, I could have a mobile app. So that was kind of hard to adapt to because I had to go through all the loops because with Apple you have to have, um, I forgot what it's called, but you have to have a certain number so that way you can create an app to have on their app store. Um, it was it was a lot, but honestly I think that my mobile app gets more traffic than my website which I actually have my website through Shopify, um, which I also love Shopify. I do all my shipping through Shopify, so I, I have my comments sold and my Shopify tied together. And what I do is everything imports into Shopify from comments sold. So I have my website that's associated with comments sold turn off, turned off, sorry. Um, and I only have sales through my mobile app with comments sold. So any sale that goes through my mobile app will import into Shopify. And there I can issue refunds, I can ship their orders, I can do pretty much anything that I could have done with comments sold, but instead it's all in Shopify. So when I need all of my information, I have it all in one spot. So that was a big thing was being able to link my comments sold to a different platform because I knew I wanted a better website than what comments sold had to offer. So then I started looking into other options and Shopify was the one that I settled on. Um, I love 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 how many different payment methods you can have on Shopify. Currently I think I have Amazon Pay, I have Affirm, I have Shop Pay, PayPal, credit cards. Um, people can pay almost any way that they want on my Shopify account. So I love it. Um, another thing that I love about Shopify is it is so incredibly easy to create your own website. They have different templates, they have free templates, they have ones that you can pay for, and when I created my website, it was so simple. It was like, boom, 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 add this here, here, and here, and you're done. I am still tweaking it here and there, but honestly, it is amazing. So I think that's your next biggest thing after you figure out who you want to sell to, what you want to sell, figure out where you're going to sell it. Um, personally, I don't think like eBay and Amazon are the best way to go, especially if you're a small business. I would definitely create your own account. I personally don't recommend selling only on Facebook. Um, I do have my Facebook group that is for like sneak peeks and new arrivals and stuff like that, but I do everything through the website and mobile app. So they can see all the new releases, they can see everything in the group, they see the promotions, um, but I don't solely sell in the group. I don't sell in the group at all actually. They have to purchase through my website and the reason being is you want to keep your accounting as simplistic as possible. And so if you are sending all these invoices separately from your Shopify, that's not getting added to your Shopify financial summary. So then you have to try to add that up, which just takes more time. So I, from the start, knew I didn't want to sell only on Facebook because I just didn't want to do the invoices. Um, <laughs> so that was that was one of my big reasons for not doing Facebook and I think that it should be yours too because it'll save you a lot of time, honestly. Um, so after you figure that out, you want to research your distributors. So once you have it figured out, you've got your website created or you started on your platform, whatever the case may be, and you figured out what you're wanting to sell, 
you want to find distributors. So researching distributors is very easy and it's very hard. So you can Google um, women's clothing vendors and a bunch will pop up, but you have to really go through and look at the websites and look at reviews because there are so many websites that Yes, they wholesale, but they don't necessarily have good quality clothing or their shipping turnaround time is horrible. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's very, very important because you don't want to purchase an order and then say two, three weeks down the line, you still haven't gotten your clothes. Um, are they coming from China? Are they coming from the U.S.? It might not matter. It might still take forever to ship, which is not good if you're running on a schedule where you do your purchasing every other week and you're banking on releasing new items every week from those shipments, but then you don't get the shipments. So now you're falling behind because your customers are not able to see new items and they've already bought everything that they want. Um, so it's really important to look at reviews, see what people have to say about the turnaround time of shipping. Um, Quality is probably the biggest thing that I've noticed that people look for. So they are the vendors that you don't need a seller's permit. They their shipping is a little bit longer. It's nice that you don't have to have a seller's permit right away. You can just buy your clothes, start your boutique. Um the problem with that is not all of the clothes are good quality. So with some of the sellers that you find in the U.S. that need a seller's permit, pretty much every time that you get the clothes, it's the same quality. I have had a couple issues here and there, but for the most part, you know what you're getting. Um, some of the Chinese websites like Dear Lover, if you order from them, Yes, there's a lot of really nice clothing, but they also use a lot of other people's stock photos, which can be deceiving because then you don't really know what the item looks like that you're getting and you get it and it's like, oh, this isn't what I was expecting and I've already waited for it for two weeks. Um, so it can be a really big letdown. So I think it's really important to consider getting a seller's permit right away so that you can start placing orders. Um, Personally, I waited a little bit to get my seller's permit. I think I waited a couple weeks and I placed an order through a different website and I got lucky with my first um, order. It was, it was pretty good, honestly. The quality of almost all the clothes was really nice, but then I got my seller's permit and I found this app called Fair and it is this massive re like wholesale app website. You can find literally anything on there. You can buy like King Can jeans and Vervet by Flying Monkey. You can buy stuff from little like small businesses. Um, anything that you're looking for you can find on there pretty much. And I, you know, once I started buying from that marketplace, it was hard to justify some of the other websites that I was buying from without my seller's permit. So please, please, please research who you are buying from. It would be horrible if you just spent four, five, six hundred dollars on a shipment and you got stuff and it is not what you expected. Even if you can get your money back, you can't get that time back. So I would Highly, highly, highly recommend apply for your seller's permit right away once you have all your details on your business figured out. Um, so that way you can start getting good quality clothing because you don't want to release items that are poor quality because you're going to ruin your reputation with your customers. And even if you get better quality clothing and in the future, they might not trust buying from you because they were like, oh, this item wasn't that great. Do I really want to buy more from them because I'm not sure that I like their quality? Um, so I feel like I've killed that topic a little bit, so I'm going to leave it at that. Make sure you apply for your seller's permit early on. Research your distributors, make sure that they have a good turnaround time for shipping, make sure that they have the quality of clothes that you're looking for, the type of clothes that you're looking for. Um, it's also really, one last thing on this, it's really important that their cost of goods 
will still allow you to sell at the price point that you want to sell at um, and still make a profit. So if you want to have a cheaper boutique and you want to price all of your items around $20, $25, it's really important to make sure that the distributors you're going to go through have a low enough price tag that you can price your items and still make profit. So I say, like, I personally always try to mark everything at 60% margin because I do run a lot of sales. And so that allows me to run sales. I have cheaper shipping, so I do pay out of pocket for shipping every time I ship something. Um, I have other costs that factor into it. So I make sure that I have it marked up 60% so that way regardless of my sale regardless of whatever the costs are I'm still making some kind of profit because the worst feeling in the world is when you lose money on stuff that you paid up for um, So just make sure that like even if you are looking to I don't know sell your items for 45 60 dollars that you're not paying 30 dollars for a shirt because after shipping, after your subscription fees for your website and maybe your mobile app, after everything, you're probably not making a whole lot of money and you're starting a business probably because it's a passion for you, but because you want to make money with it. So it is huge to look at the prices and costs of the items that you are buying and make sure that you can still make a profit with the prices that you want to sell. Don't buy something for $20 and put it for $40 in your shop when all of your other shirts might be $20, 25 because chances are it's not going to sell that well because your customers are used to the lower prices. Okay, I think I'm done with that tip. So my next tip is figure out where you're going to put your inventory. So I had this problem Initially, I had started, like, we have this family room where my desk is, and, like, behind my computer right now, we have a couch and a treadmill and stuff like that. Um, I had bins lined up, like, on the wall next to the, the couch at first. So, let me backpedal. So, I actually had all of my bins upstairs in our living room. I had six or seven of them, and my, our living room was a mess. It was awful, because I didn't really think through the inventory thing ahead of time, I just knew that I wanted to put my items in bins and that that was how I was going to organize. I didn't really think about where the bins were going to go. Um, so then we moved them downstairs next to the couch and we had them lined up on the wall, which was really great. I had three bins high for each size. I think I had two bins for my smaller sizes and then three for each bigger size and it worked out well but then as my boutique expanded and grew and I started getting more product in my bins like literally multiplied I had nine and now I have like 20 something I don't know like I have this ridiculous amount of bins and so recently I actually got metal shelves to put into the bedroom um because that's where I have all of my bins and it works a lot better I wish I would have thought it through in the beginning but make sure that you know where you're going to be able to store your inventory um maybe you're starting out and you're going to go really big and you get a warehouse right away. That is fantastic. Make sure you get shelves. I cannot tell you how much of a pain in the butt it was before I had shelves to take off five bins off just so I could get to the bottom bin so I could grab an item to ship just to put all the bins back and redo it the next day. Like it was a nightmare, seriously. So I would recommend shelves. Make shelves like the first things you buy. Buy your bins, buy your shelves. <laughs> Um, let's see. So make sure that you have a designated room where, like, if you don't want your house guests or anybody coming over seeing your mess of an inventory or your really organized inventory, whatever you're doing, make sure you have a room to put them in. So I was fine with people seeing the bins. Like, they knew I was starting a business. They did not really care. Um, so it was, it was fine. But then I started getting so many bins that, like, it just looked really messy. So, with our bedroom, we have a dresser, we have our bed, and then everything else is in the closet. So, we have a whole other half of our bedroom that we dedicated to 
the shelves. We also sell on eBay. So we have a shelf with like eBay bins. So it's, it's like eBay and then two boutique shelves. It works out really nicely. Um, but we had the extra space for that. Some people are really lucky and they have an extra like entire office or extra half of a family room, whatever works for you, honestly. Um, as long as you don't jump into it without a plan. So it's like, I cannot tell you how frustrating it is when you're trying to find your inventory, you don't know where it is, things aren't labeled. Um, like I said, you have six bins stacked and you have to get to the bottom one almost every single day, but then you move that one to the top and then like for whatever reason things happen and you're all of a sudden always in the next bottom bin. Like it's, it never fails. Um, so just make sure that you have a plan for your inventory because that can kind of ruin your experience, honestly, is if you don't like pulling out the items or organizing and you don't like shipping because it's such a hassle, you're not going to have fun doing your boutique because a lot of the boutique is organizing and shipping. So make sure that you have a plan for your inventory before you even buy inventory. Um, make sure that you have a place for it to go. So my next tip, tip number five, create a Facebook page, create a Facebook group, um, create an Instagram for your boutique, something along the lines where you can market your boutique. So currently I have an Instagram for my boutique. I don't do a whole lot on it. I more so run ads on it and that's about it. I don't really post to the actual page itself. Um, I have a Facebook VIP group. It's called Ember Rose Boutique VIP, I think it's called. And what I do is I post sneak peeks of my products. I post all of our promotions. When I'm giving away account credit on the mobile app, I post that in there. Basically, it's what it is. It's VIP. So they get first dibs on everything. They get to know about the promotions. Um, I have almost 2,000 members in that Facebook group and honestly like it has helped so much getting people to my website and to download my mobile app because they kind of get to see my personality. Um, I'm constantly posting every single day in the group and I'm sure they probably get annoyed at me sometimes but they get to see like my real life. This is what I'm doing behind the scenes. This is what I'm doing for tomorrow. This is what I'm releasing. This is how I'm feeling like the other day, so I think not last night, but the night before I woke up, I was freezing and like, like I said, I've been dealing with COVID and so I took my temperature and I had 102.5 fever and I was just miserable. So my post the next day was like, hey guys, I'm really sorry if I'm sluggish today at responding. I was up all night and like my picture of the day just happened to be a picture of the thermometer because... I didn't have the energy to take pictures of anything else. So they they kind of get to know me, um, which is really special because I don't have a storefront right now. So that's their way of interacting with me personally. I also have my Facebook page. So that's where I actually run Facebook ads and promotions. So that's where people can um, click on my link to shop now without having to go into the group or having to go to the actual page itself. The Facebook page has helped me a whole lot with reaching out to other states. So like looking at my Shopify live, I've had people from California look at my website today. I've had people from Florida, New York, I think it's Connecticut. <laughs> There's been people from all over the U.S. since I started doing Facebook ads and I've actually shipped to quite a few different states already that aren't in the Midwest. So that's really exciting. Um, so I think it's really important to create some kind of page to promote your, your boutique. So um, make sure that you label it your boutique's name so that people know that it's, you know, associated with it and make sure you're active in it. So with the Instagram, I'm not active on the page itself, but I'm active with ads. So people can see my Instagram ads, um, which is just as good personally. I don't need a million followers on my Instagram. I just need people like if they like what I'm posting in the ads, they go and follow me so that it 
it works out. Um, sorry, my screen keeps going dark for some reason. So for that tip, I think I'm about done with that. Just make sure you have something to promote your, your business because Facebook, even if you're not doing the Facebook ads and Instagram ads, it's still free to promote it. So if you're posting and you're inviting people to like your page, that's free. And you can get your friends of friends of family members and whoever else to like your page and share it. Um, it's, it's probably one of the better ways to advertise, honestly, is social media. So, my last tip for you, um, keep track of all your expenses, your startup costs, your everything. Keep track of everything. So, when we started eBay... We did not keep track of stuff very well because we knew nothing about starting a business. And that's what eBay essentially is, is you run your own business, but on a selling platform. And our taxes were a nightmare. We couldn't claim, like, anything because we didn't have receipts. We didn't have any, like, mileage written down, anything like that. So, like, all of the money we probably could have gotten back for taxes, we didn't because we could barely do our taxes. Um, so we have gotten a lot better with eBay with that. We keep all of our receipts and stuff. Um, so with the boutique, that kind of, that helped me when I started the boutique. So I keep all of my invoices. I file them by month. Um, I keep all of my receipts for gas. I keep all of my receipts for my bins, the shelves I bought, all the poly mailers that I buy. Um, I have a Dymo printer, so supplies for that, um, the costs for, I don't know, my meals when I go out, like, it's, I work from home, I work all day from home, so, like, I can expense out my meals, I think it's, like, 50% of your meal expenses you can expense out on your taxes, I could be totally wrong on that, um, I do my taxes on TurboTax, so forgive me if I have that wrong. But it's really important because you're not going to know if you're saving money, if you're making a profit, if you're losing money, if you don't keep track of all your costs. So if you think you're making a profit, but then you just went and spent $100 on bins and $400 on shelves, but you don't keep track of that, like, yeah, you might have made $600 in profit on your, your boutique, but you have all this negative in your supplies that you really, you didn't keep track of. So you think you're in the positive, but you're either barely in the positive or you're actually in the negative. Um, so the way to be successful is to keep track of your expenses. So that way you can save money where possible. So if, you know, your subscription prices are too high, you can look into other options. If your bins are getting too expensive, look into other storage options, stuff like that. Um, so I, I think these six tips are really kind of the groundwork. Obviously, there's more stuff thrown in there that I'll talk about in later videos because, you know, I have 225 videos to make, guys. <laughs> Um, so here's number one of 225. We have 224 more to go. So I'll definitely break down some of this stuff a little bit more in other videos. I just wanted to kind of give a brief, I mean, it's not really brief, it's a half hour long overview. Um, but I kind of wanted to give a snapshot of the things that I thought were the most important when I was creating my boutique. Um, I wish I would have had somebody lay it out for me it was really difficult getting started, not knowing anything, having to research everything. There was a lot of blog posts that were like, yeah, I created a boutique and this is what you need to do. But like, nobody really walked through how to do it. Not at least that I found. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to give you guys some tips on how to do it. Um, so if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe. Like I said, there will probably be the 224 more videos coming throughout this year um, because I'm competitive and I don't like losing. <laughs> so uh, even if I'm super sick, like I am with COVID, I'm still going to get ready and get in front of the camera. Um, so please let me know in the comments if there's any suggestions you have for talking about in the next 224 videos. Um, let me know 
what you think. Let me know if you want to know more about something. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you next time.